Back here at the Nigma Boxing Gym, Capital Heights, Maryland. We're going to talk to the patriarch of the Russell family right now, Gary Russell Sr. Joined by Lem Satterfield, Premier Boxing Champions as well. Okay. And then, um, and you have 32 grandchildren? Yes. Good for you. Good for you. That's, a That's a whole lot. <laughs> That's a whole lot. That's so tell me about, I know, I know it's up to you. You had started to tell me that I guess there's been some. You had some, some some challenges over the, the last couple months. I think you said something about your wife and your. Oh yeah, yeah. The wife she got really really sick, really sick. Mm -hmm. um, and we kept going back and forth to the hospital, and they weren't giving her you know a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know what it was? Uh, it's called Graves' disease. Okay. So we took her to the hospital. Um, left the gym, got home about. 11.30, quarter to 12, and she, her legs were swollen, she was in the tub, couldn't get out the tub, so I don't know, we got to go to the hospital. I took her to GW, and they discovered what it was. So she's on the recovery track, she's getting on my nerves now, so <laughs> she's recovering. <laughs> uh, what month was that? Uh, this happened last month. Right, and she's okay? She's been going through it since, I think, uh, November, because right. we were wondering whether or not she was hospitalized doing uh, Thanksgiving mm -hmm. the week of and they let out just the day before mm -hmm. yeah your, your sons were scheduled to fight at first and then yeah I had to pull it yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah. now the one thing that I think a lot of people and I know myself being from a big family and we have a thing called first Sunday dinner um, where everybody shows up what I always tell them and my, by the way my nephews live right in this neighborhood, and my brother, their father lives right in this neighborhood. They all live right around here, off of Richie Marlboro, so they, they know of you. The, the, the cohesiveness of your family, um, you know, I don't see... Can you just talk about that, and how when things like what you just experienced, you guys pull back and you kind of... Yeah, yeah, like you say, the keys in this, of the family is very important. Um... We've implemented Sunday dinner, you know, every Sunday. All the family come over and they eat, you know. Um, yeah. And then fortunately, I just bought another house right next yeah, door. Yeah, that's what I was oh, okay. yeah. Tell okay. me about that. When Beautiful. did you do that? Oh, man. You do this. Uh, late November. Late November. So we got 19 and 21. Okay. You know, so I might cook at 19 to bring everything over to 21. Okay. You know, so who lives in both houses? Me. <laughs> <laughs> you and your wife? No, my wife is just staying in the new house. Okay. Because she got her own walk-in closet. So she is, I think she called it her, her, her girly room. Mm -hmm. Okay. So she's there. I've been staying at the other house. Okay. Sometimes you need a break. Yeah, you yeah. need a break. Okay. So, go ahead. I was just thinking, uh, I came late, but uh, where are the young kids now uh, in their development? And where, uh, are they right on time, in your opinion? Antonio and Antoine. For this fight? Well, just just at their career level right now. I think it could be um, pushed a little faster, you know, but I'm contented and happy with the way they're progressing right now. I think they're on, they still got learning. You know, you never, ever learn this sport. You know so what I mean? you think they should have more fights up to this point? Yes. Is that something you push for, or you just take it as it comes? Take it as it comes. Um, I've asked for a couple of fights for both Antoine and Antonio, but because they're my kids, I'm going to be very, very careful in the way I move them. You know, so they might offer me some... Uh, we're not doing this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not right now. Mm -hmm. Now the guy Antonio was fighting he fought a lot of fights. He's like he's by the record. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Um, thirty. Thirty-four. Who can buy it? Seventeen. Thirty-four. Seventeen and five. And five. Mm -hmm. You got it. You own it. Mm -hmm. uh, we might not take that fight. Not based on his record. Uh, we were supposed to fight him a couple months back, and he didn't pass uh, the hepatitis test. Ooh. Mm. So now all of a sudden he passed it. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's yeah that, was, that was the issue with that last fight, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So what happens then if you don't take it? They, 
you got to find somebody else. But you will fight on. Yeah, definitely. Fight on 26. Definitely. Mm-hmm. So they got time, you know, from now until 26 to find an opponent that has a clear medical history. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, what, what about Antoine's opponent? He's kind of a tough guy. It's a good step up for him. Yeah. You know, but I'm happy with Antoine's performance. He's learning. He's starting to really, really learn the sport. Is he sixes or eights now? Eights. So this fight will be an eight, eight round. We yes. weren't sure originally. Yeah. It will be an eight round? Okay. Yeah, we, we, actually, uh, I requested an eight for Al and Antonio. He said, okay. Mm-hmm. So I was trying to put Tony on the fast track. He says after about two more fights, he'll definitely be fighting for a belt. How much consulting do they do with you when he comes up with those decisions? A lot. So yours the kind of word? Yes. Mm-hmm. And so I'll talk to you. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll talk to you a lot. About yeah. You. And as far as you just said, uh, the belt, can you expand on that, Antonio? Because he's knocking mm-hmm. everybody out. Mm-hmm. And uh, you said, Al said two more fights? Two to three more fights. So his third fight from here? Yeah. Which is taking him into if, next year. If I feel as though he's physically and mentally up to it. Mm-hmm. What type of opponents are you going to have for him this year? We're going to step it up. Um, there was another guy we were supposed to fight. He fought for three titles. Um, can't think of his name. Yeah, I know he fought, he fought at 26. Then he went down. Um, and that's the fight we wanted to take, but he couldn't make the weight. In fact, I hear the guys here in D.C. Uh, training with Tank. Okay. A spawn party for Tank. Okay. What's the status on Gary as far as where we're talking about now? You know, the politics in the sport is terrible, man. You know, everybody positioning for um, to make that money, more money. Gary... Mandatory is Leo Santa Cruz. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Santa Cruz opted to take a tune-up, mm-hmm. right? Although the tune-up is not a softball, so he's not prepping for gun. Mm-hmm. Doesn't make sense. Right. Um, I spoke to Al. And he's going to use this ploy to promote the fight with Leo. Mm-hmm. But on the second note, Gary gets chance to get a tune-up fight, mm-hmm. but he has to pick anybody from the top. I think uh, 14 in the WBC. Mm-hmm. Have you seen the list? Mm-hmm. Everybody, everybody they can fight. Everyone. There's no easy walkover fights. Mm-hmm. Most of the guys um, they gave us to choose from got more knockouts than the guy that Leo's mm-hmm. opponent has fights. Mm-hmm. I was about to ask, was Leo's opponent, is he ranked in the, no. the top? Okay. What about the other champ in 126? He just fought not long ago. Can't think Selby. of his name. Selby. 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 No. Yeah, Warrington got beat. Yeah, he's got one to beat. beat Crampton. Right, uh, right. And uh, Leo Santa Cruz is one. Is Oscar about this? The Oscar just fight. We gotta Oscar. beat Selby, is what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Well, he just fought. He just, he just fought. beat Crampton. He right, beat okay. Yeah. Josh okay. mm-hmm. mm-hmm. so Warrington. Yeah, Josh. There you go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we're still looking at March for Gary? Yes, we're still looking at March. March, okay. Yeah. Um, we picked one opponent from the list that was sent to us, and Al said he's going to be on top of it. So. Will he be local? Yeah, most definitely. You know, it's kind of disappointing because we wanted Jared Hurd mm-hmm. to fight on our card, you know. Uh, do something here, but that car definitely local, the one in May. Yes, it is. I think it's going to be a uh, convention center. Convention center, okay. But which which one? The one yeah, heard. Uh, heard and J Rock Wade. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's, 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 that's a rough fight too. Yeah. 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 You want to watch it? I guess so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you say you want to fight home? Yeah. So you were trying to get a, a Russell Heard call? Exactly. Yeah, that's how it was. That would have been a nice that'd call. That would be fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, sell out all of it. So what was our talks about that when it, when he when you you know brought it to his attention? He was listening, but you know it's, he went in a different direction because you know he already scheduled a fight for her in, in May. 
we want Gary to fight in March or April. I would like for him to fight in April. Mm -hmm. um, that's what he just said. That's contingent upon our getting this guy we pick. Mm -hmm. You want to say who it is? Or? Uh, his name is Koai Koa something. We'll show the. Um, Where's he from? I'm not even sure, man. Okay. I don't look at him until we lock in. Right. And this we got, I might do two sections of watching him fight. You know, about five rounds. Mm -hmm. And I just shut him down. And he's, in, and he's in the top four, top four. Top, top 15. Okay. I think he's what, number 11. What was Al Heyman's response to see the crowd when, when Gary fought Leo Santa Cruz here? The, 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 the turnout of the crowd and everything. What was his response to that? When he fought Leo? Uh, I mean, who you? I'm sorry. Diaz. Julio, Julio Diaz. Uh, Jojo Diaz. Jojo. Yep. Jojo Diaz. Mm -hmm. I think he was pleased with that. I think he made his money. <laughs> you know, that and network. You know, because that's really where the money lies mm -hmm. in, in television. Um, and I forgot what the stats were, but the numbers are really, really good. So that was his plan pretty much to keep fighting him at home since he saw it. It, it, it was a pretty no, good... No, no. Actually, um, we suggest that we fight at home. Okay. I never wanted to fight in D.C. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's been no secret. Yeah, I did, though, didn't he? He didn't care one way or the other. He fight in the telephone booth. Right, right. <laughs> why, why didn't you want to fight in D.C.? Because of the people. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we... We don't support one another. Yep. Mm -hmm. I heard that. Before. Yep. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We don't support one another. I said we would never fight in DC, but he owed it to his fans, the loyal fans. We stood behind him in the Olympics. So when you say don't support, you mean the commissions, the other fighters, the, the other, other trainers, fighters, the trainers, right. mm -hmm. the other gyms, you know, the other just gyms. the boxing community. Exactly. Right. Okay. I know what, I, I talked to Antonio, I mean, I talked to um, Mark Two Sharp Johnson years ago, and he said, I said, man, because this was at a time when he, uh, they were trying to bring him back, they were afraid of him, so they would bring him back and put him against a killer, they put him against Montiel out on the West Coast, and he beat him, and I said, man, don't you think it's time for you to fight at home? He said, I don't want to fight at home, he said, I come go to the barbershop and people ask me for tickets. Mm -hmm. They don't they don't and Lamont Peterson said the same thing a while ago. Yeah. I don't know do you, if that's, do that's you a think, fighter time. Yeah. Do you think his growth would have been a little faster if he was a hometown fighter and they did have the support that, that he should have been having? Who? Gary. Gary. Instead of fighting out of town all the time. No, I think he's on the right he was on the right wave at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, um, they wanted us to fight Johnny Gonzalez early in his career. I told him no. Shut it down. I told him no. I said, that's a title fight. Sure enough, it became a title fight. What venue are you looking at for April or May? I mean, March or April? I'm looking at the Armory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A little nostalgic, but yeah, I like the um, yeah, it's not, yeah I park in the like the springtime is not too hot. Exactly. So so we're in right DC itself. Yeah. Not in Maryland. DC. I like that. I think people can see from everywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a good, great location. 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 Great People can take the subway now. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's right. Get your park in the subway. It's successful, you know. Um... But the, the business, man, it's like I'm getting a little tired because you still got to deal with the politics. Like I say, Leo Santa Cruz fighting up, not downplaying his opponent, but he's fighting somebody. Do you know who he's fighting? And no name. No, I can't. Yeah, Miguel, Miguel Flores, but what's uh, Gary called him a cream pop? <laughs> you, think, you think he was ducking Gary in a sense? I think that Al Heyman is playing chess instead of checkers. Mm. And he's strategically doing little moves that he can capitalize on that uh, on the back end. And do you think do you think it's because of the, the tough wars that Leo Santa Cruz has been having in his past, what, two or three fights, basically? With the same guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, tough, tough. yeah tough. <laughs> I don't think it's that. I think that um, there's a friendship that Al has established with Leo. Leo named his son after him. Man, look, his father's dying of cancer. Yeah. You got one namesake, 
you know, boy, you're going to name it after another man. Mm -hmm. You got tattoos on your arm that says Al Hamer. So it's kind of hard to, to, to think that there's not going to be any type of um, bias based on, you know, what was put out. Um, Name it ever challenge or people just go along with whatever he said? People challenge him. Mm -hmm. We challenge him. And we try to keep it as candid as possible. If we don't like something, nah, that ain't right. I don't see the, the finesse in that move. Has he ever been here to visit you guys? No. You ever yeah. seen him before? Oh, all the time. He'll come to our fights, come in the back room. You know, he stays out the way of the cameras, you know, stays way under the radar. And the man is very sharp, very smart. He's likable. You, man, believe me, you can't do nothing but like him if you sit and talk to him, you know. And I told him once, I said, you know, it used to be uh, this movie um, that came up. It was a black sitcom um and the grandmother made everybody feel as though they were the special one. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how I was. How long did it take you to, to, to actually understand the whole politics of the sport since you've been in with, with Gary? On a professional level, it didn't take long at all. But it's always been politics, even with the amateurs mm -hmm. coming through that. You know, USA Boxing, even our LBC, PVA always been stopped but on the professional side I mean that rabbit hole goes deep in terms Gary Russell Sr. thank you buddy appreciate it that's Gary Russell Sr. great probing interview and we're of course joined by Lim Satterfield Premier Boxing Champions uh, Ron Harris of the Prince George and Sentinel and my partner Juan, Mer Juan Marshall we'll talk to you a little bit later from Enigma Boxing Gym thank you